So welcome back. Let's talk about lights. You're looking at some of the videos that I recorded, especially when I didn't went through the dry riverbed and busted up my fog light and also the surrounds, which obviously needed replacing when I got back. I'll show you what the damage looks like on that. But one thing I also noticed when I took this photo is I noticed that my headlights seem to be yellow and not bright or, you know, that crisp white. So I, when I got back, I opened up the little cap on the back of the headlights and had a look at one of the, uh, took out one of the D3S lights and noticed how cloudy they are. I'll show you a close up in a minute. There's traffic going by, so I apologize. But I noticed how cloudy they both were. And I believe they were on their way out. So I've replaced both of those um, with a pair of Osram D3Ss. Now I think there are different variations. The 10 to 12 model requires the D3S. And I got these from Halfords. I think there's about a hundred quid for the pair. Real simple to do. And now the lights are much, much brighter. You can definitely see the difference by upgrading those and putting those new ones in. Both of these, these are the fog lights. Now these came from Powerful UK. And I know some of you are saying, well, hang on a minute, didn't you throw out some originals? Yes, I did. But both of those had cracked lenses. Um, one of them had a massive chip out of it. Um, and they were badly pitted. It looks like something had hit it at some point in time. So I replaced those over. Now, one of them, the one on the driver's side, so if you look at the damage that I caused when I went through that ice breaking exercise, it actually snapped off two of the lugs on this um, fog light. Now, these are LED from Powerful UK. This one has been off for, let's see, two weeks, and you can still see all the condensation in that light. Now both of them were the same and I noticed this both of them had got fogged up there's a big amount of condensation in both of them so in essence these two are junk there's no point in putting them back on when they condensate like that unfortunately I love powerful UK I think they do some really cool stuff but these are crap and I think they're just cheap Chinese knockoffs and unfortunately not worth it so let me take you around the front. I'll show you what I've done with the fog lights. I bought a set off eBay, a replacement set. Just be aware that the fog lights for the three different models of the L322 are all slightly different. So I had to get some for the 10 and 12 model. And what I've done is I put this product called Lamin, Lamin Nex around it, which is this amber coating. And I'll show you what it looks like on, on, the, um, on the fog light. <coughs> Real easy to do, and I'll explain how I did that. But I got those uh, a pair off eBay, pair of replacement OEM genuine. They were 28 quid per pair. Now the great thing about these vehicles is because they're 10 years old, you can buy an awful lot of stuff off eBay relatively inexpensively when they start breaking these vehicles out. So two OEM genuine fog light replacements, 20 some odd quid, new light bolts as well. So this is probably the first time that these two have actually stood side by side. So this one is nine days younger than that one. And I found out from the build numbers that that one hit the production line a day after, let me get this right, that one went on the production line a day through all the build process and all assembling the parts when it was being built. It started a day early, this one went through three days later came out early while this one was still being finalized and built it'll be a trivia for you okay so the lights themselves if you look at the original you can see that these are much much brighter with these new bulbs in and then on the bottom here what I've done is I put this laminex coating so this is the replacement fog light it's got a new bulb in it and then I coated it with this Laminex and I'll put a link in the description to where I got it. And the way that you apply it is you get a heat gun, heat up the lens and then apply the film and then put heat on top of the film and then gradually just move your finger over the film so it sits on the lens. Do that for about a couple of minutes, make sure we get all the creases out and all of the, uh, the air pockets. And then when you're finished, just let it cool and as it cools it molds itself over the top and around the lamp and then just take a, a blade a Stanley blade and go around and trim it 
and then it makes it real easy to just pop these covers on because you really can't see any of the trim work but this gives it a really nice amber look and for fog lights amber is the best color to penetrate fog and dust um, you don't get that reflection off any of the fog or any clouds or anything so on the front nice bright lights nice amber fog lights So here are the light bulbs. These are the HIDs, the D3Ss, and you can clearly see that they're fogged up. Both of them are fogged up. And I think that's what's causing it to look yellow in the uh, in the lights that they had. But anyway, these were replaced. These are about 58 pounds each, I think it is, from Halfords. You could probably get them cheaper, but quite honestly, I couldn't be bothered to hunt around and find them. Um, so anyway, that's what they look like not really done many unboxing videos in fact I think this is probably the first one I've done but I've mentioned before that I ordered a set of these ARB Solace floodlights I've got a pair both of them flood I've got the loom and the cool thing about the loom is that the loom comes with uh, this dial so it's on off and then you can also set the intensity of the light coming out through the lights now clearly getting this loom shoved through the car and get it wired up is going to take a while. I don't know if I'm going to do it or whether I'll pass it off to someone else. But these monsters are pretty big. But I also love the profile. And I've got an original Land Rover Spotlight kit that I'm going to put on. But these have got, I think it's 36 LEDs should be able to see those. Now whether I keep one side red, one side black, both black, both red, not sure yet we can play with those because these caps just pop them. But as I mentioned they also come with this has actually got a cover on it but this is the um, the clear they do a black cover and they've also got an amber cover as well. So I've got all of those just in case I'm going to play around the colours, see which ones I like. This is a lovely bit of kit. And um, the pair of them will go on. It's a bumper off job. I will probably get CBS, the people that did my Navi Plus install, to put these on for me. Um, I've got a sensor out as well, one of those parking sensors broke when I went through the uh, dam busting ice breaking exercise. And I also have my Autovox rearview mirror. And I'll quickly show you that. So this is the Autovox digital rearview mirror. And it comes, this is the V5 Pro, which has the replacement um, arm on it. And then inside of the kit, you've got the full wiring loom, you've got the uh, camera that comes out the back, and then there's all these different clips. Now, because this is BMW, this will clip straight onto um, the adapter for the Range Rover windscreen. So you just slot the adapter on and kick it in. Like I say, this is going to be partial dash out, side eight pillars, route the wiring to the back. And because CBS did an excellent job with the Navi Plus and know how to take these things apart, I will probably just farm this out to them to go do when they do the spotlights. While I'm in the back here, a couple of things. As you can see, the frame is all out. I thought I had a dead cell on the battery. I've re recharged that. That is now fine. I'm just reworking some of the Red Vision system into the back of the frame. So this is my 1000 watt inverter, which I found a home for over here. It was on the back of the frame, but I moved it over here. And then you can see the cable is being rewired over there. My Manager 30 has arrived. I've started to put that on the side of where I got my distribution board. I'm just waiting for the Red Vision distribution box to arrive. And then I will start building it back up again and then the frame will go back in. Lastly, I got a new air compressor. The other one is making one horrendous noise and I'm still getting, if I put it in low mode, hit the button to pump it up, I always get a sus suspension fault. And I've got the gap tool on it and it's pointing to um, a leak or it's pretty much the compressor that seems to be the problem and you can hear it, it's a horrendous noise. So I've actually got this going in next week. I'm probably going to farm it out to uh, my local Land Rover 
Uh, the Richmond Land Rover Specialist will do it. It's an hour job. It's just easier for him to do it than me messing around in the back of here doing it. I could do it, just don't have the time to do it. This bit of, bit of kit I love. I've had one on the Defender. There it is. That's got to come off, by the way. Rooftop tent. That's on its way out of here next weekend, I believe. We'll be saying goodbye to that. I will be doing one last video with that. I will be taking it out across the valleys, sending the drone up, as long as it doesn't rain, and then just do one last 20 minute video of me driving the Defender. But yes, I digress. This would be good to have this on because I absolutely love the fact that I can see right out the back without having any restricted view using the, uh, the internal mirror. And I've got used to it and I really miss it. It's quite interesting that I miss it on a vehicle like this with all the tech on it. With that thing, before I put the Navi Plus and everything else in, had more tech in it than this. But anyway, that's all getting rectified. So this is the light episode, bring this to a close. So new HID headlights, love them. Much, much brighter, I've taken it for a drive at night. Significantly brighter and I definitely would recommend you having a look at them, especially if you've got an older vehicle and see whether they are clouded up or the yellowed. Fog lights all in, all working. And I like the amber, again at night, I've been driving it around the Welsh hills here, especially with it's misty and rainy. Make a big, big difference having the amber coating on there. Link in the description to the Laminex um, covering that I've got. Really looking forward to getting the Solace installed and seeing what they look like. And again, I went for both flood. They do them in flood and spot. I had considered doing one spot and one flood, but I'm not in Australia and I'm not trying, you know, trying to do a thousand kilometers down the road with a spotlight. So the floods will be fine for what I use it for um, in some of that dusk type of driving that I would potentially do when I go on my trips. Um, and having those flood beam across either side would be perfect for what I need. So a couple more videos that will be popping up in the coming weeks. I'll do one more last video, as I mentioned, with the Defender. Um, send it up through the valleys, send the drone up as well. Hopefully the rain will stay away and I can actually get the drone up. I need to take the roof rack off because when the Defender goes, I need to get the uh, Cargo Bear frame for the rooftop tent off and then on here. So I need to rework the slats in my um, roof rack to be able to make sure everything lines back up. So I've got my Max tracks on the front. I've got my Rotopax mount on the back. I need to figure out where that tent goes and realign everything. So it's going to take a little while to do that, but the roof rack is going to have to come off and do that. So I will walk you through what that looks like as well. As I mentioned before, the frame is all out. Recharge the battery. I'm pretty sure there must have been something going on with one of the connections I had on the Anderson plug. It was quite interesting. When I pulled them apart, I did notice that, that one of the uh, connections popped out. So I'm just wondering whether that connection in the Anderson plug pushed it out and it didn't make contact or it wasn't making consistent contact. But anyway, that's all out. And I'll go through and double check all the connections on all the Anderson plugs. I will do a video of what is on the back of the distribution board. So the Manager 30 is on. You've already seen that the Red Vision digital display is in. That's run through an RJ45 connection. I'm just waiting uh, for my Red Vision system. And yes, I did say in a previous video, I'm not going down that route, but I did. So that is on its way from Australia. I'm not sure where it is. It's sitting somewhere between probably Brisbane and Dubai. Who knows? Um, but I expect that to be here in a couple of weeks. And when that does come, I will then put that on the side of the distribution board and then lay it out so you can see all the components of the Red Vision system and how I've got it all connected up and plugged up. And then put the frame back in again, connect it all up, and then run it to make sure that the battery is actually good and it's being charged off the Manager 30. And then I'm going to do a trip with the rooftop tent on and then head up hopefully to Derbyshire to meet some of the guys off Instagram, uh, Brian and a few other people and go do some uh, off-roading up there and do more of a collab video, which I'm looking forward to. And then, not sure where we go next, back to Spain, probably. I'm also booked to do the German Land Rover event at the Nürburgring in June, which I'm really looking forward to. I've been invited to go over to that. So that is something to look forward to. I'm not sure how many English people are members of the German Land Rover Club, but I met those guys when I was going to the Spanish Land Rover Club event um, at La Roja back in October. And we cruised around the page. You can see an orange Defender and a white Range Rover behind me. Those two, Wolf and Mike, 
Um, we spent the day with them cruising around. It was wonderful. Great guys, very friendly. Uh, we spent the whole day together. And it was just a brilliant uh, experience. But they've invited me to join them in the German Land Rover Club at Nürburgring. Uh, I think it's the weekend of June 9th. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. So that's a wrap. Just on a personal note, some of you who follow me on Instagram will know um, about a month ago I lost my father. He died suddenly of a heart attack. So the reason why you probably didn't some, see some videos pop up on a consistent basis is I've been dealing with that. It's a life-changing event. Um, I don't want to get into too much personal detail, but I'm looking after my 84-year-old mother and seeing her through the early stages of what we're all dealing with. Um, it's a massive shock. But the good thing is, on a personal note, the last time that I did see my dad, we were both in the Defender. And I did post a picture on Instagram sort of honoring him that we took that Defender out, went down the valley together. So my lasting memory is a good one. My lasting memory is doing what we both loved, which is what I inherited from him, which is driving Land Rovers. And with that, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.